One thing that really makes me mad about the Jeep Gladiator. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. And that's right, there is one thing, one big thing, that makes me really mad about the Jeep Gladiator. You know, I'll give you a little bit of history. You know, I traded my Jeep Gladiator Sport for the Jeep Gladiator Mojave. And I knew this up front, but the Jeep Gladiator Mojave has a vibration in it. I've talked about that before. It's at standstill when you're just in gear, like at a stoplight, a stop sign, in your driveway, whatever. It starts to vibrate a little bit. And enough so that you can actually see water. If you ever done this test, you know, sit a bottle of water in your in your Gladiator and you can see the little waves in it, right? So it's driving me insane. Um, and I've been looking into some possible causes of it. I did take it to the dealer and they told me they couldn't find anything. Uh, it was just normal, I guess. And don't you love when they say that? It's just inherent to the vehicle. That's a cop out in my opinion. You know, unless you can tell me that every Jeep Gladiator has a vibration, it's not the way it is and don't tell me it's just inherent to mine no way that means there's something wrong but anyway i uh i've been doing some research and i've gotten a lot of suggestions from you guys uh in comments on the videos and some of the things that have been said is uh well, it could be the plugs could be the fuel injectors could be the coil packs could be wiring could even be something loose in the engine god forbid it's something like that uh, a loose motor mount, or maybe even a dirty throttle body. Now, out of all of those, there's one that's easiest to do, and that, of course, is the throttle body. I mean, you just remove the cold air intake and you can kind of clean that thing out or whatever. And that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with that. That's not what makes me really mad, though. What makes me really mad is how you get to the plugs. Um, it's about impossible to do yourself unless you don't mind taking half the engine apart. And I exaggerate a little bit, but there's a bunch of junk up on top that you have to take off before you can access the plugs. That's a bummer. And they're deep down in there too. I mean, if you were to break something, like maybe the end of the plug or who knows, strip it out, whatever, you would have a problem because it's not easy to access. You have to use a longer kind of a socket to get to it. And probably something uh, magnetic would be helpful as well so that it kind of grabs onto the plug. Or maybe one of those little washer-like things, I don't know what they're called, it's kind of like a grommet that fits down inside the socket to kind of grab the plug when you pull it out. That's really the least of, of my anger when it comes to it. It's the whole process of having to do it. Now, I know there's going to be some folks out there who have maybe done it before or maybe more mechanically inclined or even some folks that work in shops that say, oh, this is a piece of cake. Sure it is. You know, I've watched a few videos of people doing this and it's like, my God, man, you have to disassemble so much to get to it. You run the chance of creating bigger issues than just the vibration. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not willing to tackle it. Uh, because I am. I mean, I'm not going to leave it the way that it is. To me, it's just not right. It makes it not fun to drive. It has to be corrected. Now, I'm hoping, I mentioned the throttle body. You know, there's a lot of cleaners and things out there, different ways you can do it. And that's the easiest because, again, all you have to do is remove the intake and you have that full access to the throttle body or the throttle body opening, if you will. Uh, there are cleaners out there you can get. There's a little bit of controversy on how that should be done. You know, I've seen some people take that cleaner and just spray the heck out of the throttle body. You know, my concern about that is stuff getting inside the throttle. You know, I don't want to inundate it with liquid, cleaner or not, and then have to worry about that and maybe create a bigger problem. So I think the best way to do that is just to kind of spray it on a rag or something and then kind of put it on all the areas that you want to clean. Now, there is a, a reason that I think this may not work, and that is because the Jeep doesn't have that many miles on it. I mean, it's got, if I recall, less than, I think less than 5,000, less than 3,000 miles, something like that. 
there's really no reason that the throttle body should be dirty and causing this problem. And if you're wondering how the throttle body can cause this problem, well, it's because there can be buildup around the flap that's in there, the little flange, the float that goes back and forth when the throttle opens. That can create a, a gap, if you will, and not allow the throttle body to work the way that it's supposed to, or, or that little flange or flap, I suppose. So that's really what you want to clean. Now, I suppose that you could pull stuff in through the air cleaner and it could start to build up on the opening of the throttle body area and impede the way that the flap is supposed to work. I mean, I could see that happening. Uh, so that's going to be my first attempt. If that does not work, then it probably comes down to the coil packs or the, the plugs themselves. Again, not a job I'm really looking to tackle, but I'll do it if I have to. And I would imagine if you paid a shop to do that, assuming you can find a shop, and I'm sure there's shops out there that'll take your money. Uh, but if you paid a shop to do it, I'm guessing the job, because of the difficulty or the length of time it takes to take everything off, would probably cost anywhere from two to 500 bucks is my guess. Uh, crazy money for something that shouldn't be happening on basically a brand new Jeep anyway. Another thing I want to mention about it, people have stated that, you know, the dealerships are hesitant to do anything with it because it isn't throwing any codes. And that's what uh, is happening in my case. And that's one thing that the, the dealership mentioned when I took it in is just to go ahead, drive it, you know, see if it levels out, if it goes away, or if it throws any kind of a code. And then they would take a, a more precise look at it, if you will. Uh, my word, not theirs. Uh, not something, again, I'm looking to, to do. You know, one thing I always think back on, I had a Pontiac Grand Am. I bought it brand new years ago, and we were going to take it on a trip through the mountains and stuff, and it was having some transmission issues. Brand new. So I took it to the dealership and they were reluctant to do anything. They kind of told me the same thing. And at that point, just had had my daughter really young and I said, so you're telling me uh, that it's okay if I take this truck or this car off rather, drive it through the mountains and get stranded, chance getting stranded with a newborn and my wife and I in the car, that's okay. Well, they seem to have had a conscience or didn't want the bad pub had that happen because after that, they were very helpful. They replaced the transmission, and believe it or not, the problem went away. Go figure. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, just something that, uh, you know, is driving me nuts. It's really the only thing that really makes me mad about the Jeep Gladiator, and that is the ability to access these parts to change them out. Remember the old days when the spark plugs sat right up there? You could whip those things out, take you half an hour to change them all if you had a V8. And even the wiring, pretty darn simple. Not anymore. Leave a comment. Let me know what makes you mad from a maintenance standpoint on your Jeep Gladiator. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels. Rob Motive, all about Toyota Tacomas, and Rob Motive MT, all about compact trucks. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.